Hi, it's Steve. Today we'd like to show you how to change the idle wheel on your dryer. It's a really easy repair. Let me show you how we do it. Now before we begin this repair, the first thing we'll need to do is to disconnect power to the dryer. So either locate the electrical panel, turn off the appropriate breaker, or remove the appropriate fuses, or pull the dryer far enough forward that you can unplug it. We'll also need to pull that dryer out somewhat so that we can lift the main top to access these components. Now with the dryer pulled slightly forward, our next step will be to raise the main top so that we can access these components. Now what you'll want to do is make yourself up some type of a lanyard to support that main top while you're doing your repair. So either use a small piece of light duty chain or some heavy cord. Next we'll take a thin putty knife. We'll come in that gap between the main top and the front panel. We'll locate the spring clip that secures that. You'll feel the resistance of that spring clip, so just depress it, lift up on the top, and then just hold that up there for now. We'll do the same on the opposite side. Raise that top just beyond vertical. The hinges won't support that by itself, so you'll need to use a lanyard. We'll take out one of these little rubber bumpers on the top of the side panel, and then secure that top. Now once we've done that, we'll next disconnect the wire harness retaining clip from the top of the front panel. And then we'll remove two quarter inch hex head screws that secure that front panel to the sides of the cabinet. Then we'll tilt that front panel just slightly forward. We can access that door switch at this point. We're simply going to lift that away from the bracket that secures it to the front panel. Just spread the little tabs on both the top and the bottom of the switch to release it. And then we'll just tuck that out of the way. We can then lower that front panel. And then we'll lift it off of the two hooks to secure it to the base frame. And we're just gonna set that aside and then go to our repair. Now with the front panel removed, our next step will be to get that drum out of the way. And to do so, we'll need to release the belt from the idler and motor pulleys. So we're gonna reach in on the right hand side here. So you locate the belt and then the idler pulley and right below it will be the motor pulley. So if we pull that idler towards the right, Release the tension on the belt. Just pull the belt towards the front of the dryer. Now we'll get it away from the idler bracket. Unhook it from the motor pulley. And we should have about that much slack in the belt. So what we'll do next is we'll use that belt to support the weight of the drum. We'll lift it up and pull it right out of the cabinet. There'll be a little bit of resistance where the drum sits on the rear drum rollers. simply take that drum and the belt and set them aside. Now with the drum out of the way, we have access to that idler pulley. And there's a cap nut that holds that pulley onto that shaft and it's pressed into place and it's on there quite tight. So we'll need to pry that off. So using either a flat blade screwdriver or you may even try a pair of channel locks, we'll go in between that cap nut and the pulley and try to pry that off. Now, if you have difficulty prying that off with the idler arm in place, you can remove that whole assembly. We'll simply disconnect the spring from the base, 
So just grab the end of it with a pair of needle nose pliers and pull it out of the slot. And then you can pull that bracket straight back and lift the assembly out. Now once you get that out far enough, you may be able to get a pair of needle nose pliers in behind it so that you can pry from two sides at the same time. If you're able to save that, we'll be able to reuse it. There are a couple little sharp metal clips opposing each other. Just make sure that those are not damaged beyond repair. If so, you'll want to order a new one of those. Make sure that we didn't damage the spacer washer. You can then remove the old outer pulley. Next, we'll clean up that shaft before we install the new pulley, and then we'll lubricate that as well. And we'll put a couple of drops of oil on that shaft. Replace the spacer washer and then we'll need to tap that cap nut back onto the shaft. Sure that's on nice and tight. We'll then line up that lower portion of the shaft with a receptacle on the back of that housing. We'll give you a view of that. Once that's put into position, we'll then hook the lower hook on that spring into the hole in the base frame. We'll then make sure that we have that either arm insert it into the back of the housing if it came out. And again make sure it sits above that stop. Slide the spring over into place and we'll reattach that to the base frame. Make sure you get a firm grip on that spring with your pliers and hook it into place. So then we want to make sure that that either bracket is sitting above the metal stop on the back of that motor support frame and there's lots of spring tension on it. Now we're ready to put the drum back in. Now when placing the drum back in the dryer, we want to make sure that this lip at the rear captures both rear drum rollers. So supporting the weight of the drum with the belt, we'll fit it between the sides of the cabinet. You may need to spread those just slightly. And then we need to line up the rear of that drum to make sure it sits on those rollers. rotate it a couple times. Check inside, make sure it's sitting flush on that drum seal. Then we'll line up that belt with the marks that were on the drum. And then we're going to reach in and reattach it to both the auger pulley and the motor pulley. So reaching in on the right hand side, just grasp the belt, locate the auger pulley, lay that belt out over top of the auger pulley and pull it in underneath towards the right and then push that outer pulley to the right to take the tension off the belt and wrap the belt around the motor pulley at the same time. Make sure we have the groove side of the belt against the drum and the motor pulley and the flat side of the belt against the outer pulley. 
We'll just rotate that drum a couple of times to make sure that it does turn the motor and blower wheel. And now we're ready to put the front panel back on. Now as we tilt that front panel up against the cabinet, we want to make sure that we line up the hole in the back of that front panel with a locating pin that is attached to the cabinet. Also want to make sure we tuck that felt seal so it doesn't catch on the drum. And once it's in place, we'll install one of the mounting screws and we'll do it on the opposite side that the switch is on. That'll hold the front panel in place. We'll go to the opposite side. Again, we we'll need to make sure that we line up that locating pin with the hole in the cabinet. But before we press it up against the cabinet, we're going to take that switch and locate it in that spring bracket on the front panel. Now the easiest way to mount that is to open the door completely and that will allow you to be able to manipulate that spring clip. Just spread them slightly, line up the push button with a hole in the front panel, and then snap it into place. Make sure that that clip captures both the top and bottom of that switch. You can then close the door up. Again, we'll make sure that that felt seal is outside of the drum area. And then we'll reattach the second mounting screw. Now next we'll take that harness retaining clip, we'll tuck that into the opening in the top of the front panel, snap it into place, make sure that the wires are away from the drum. Now we're ready to put the main top back down. So next we'll disconnect our lanyard, then we'll replace that rubber bumper, just fit it back into that opening on the top of the cabinet. And we'll lower the top down carefully. We want to make sure that we engage those two clips. Now we're ready to push the dryer back into position. Put the dryer back in place. We're now ready to reconnect the power and your repair is complete.